Hi everyone! In this video, I am going to show you how to implement Monte Carlo integration within Python. Before we get started, let's review the packages we'll use. These include matplotlib, numpy, and scipy. Let's get started. Before we actually implement Monte Carlo integration, we need to go over the difference between analytic solutions and numeric solutions. Analytic solutions also called closed form solutions, are mathematical solutions in the form of math expressions. There are two big advantages that come with analytic solutions. The first is transparency. The analytic solutions are clear, clearly defined with math expressions. They're also very efficient. Once you solve for an analytic solution, you have the solution and you don't need to compute it again. Let's go through an example of an analytic solution. Here we have a very simple function, f of x, where x is the input and it's also the output as well. And this is a definite integral that goes from 0 to 10. Here we have the solution, the analytic solution laid out. We see that once we take the integral of x, this gives us x squared divided by 2 from 0 to 10. Next, we plug these numbers, the limits, in, and we subtract the upper limit from the lower limit. We simplify, and we come up with a number 50. And we have our analytic solution here for the integral. What we'll do now is we'll define a function. We'll just call it func, and it's the same function as this. We give it an input x, and we are just going to return x. Very simple function. Next, let's plot this out just to get a visual of this. And here we have the area of the function that ranges from 0 to 10. And the area under here once we take the integral of it, is 50. And we are next going to solve for this numerically or computationally. Let's get into numerical solutions. And numerical methods are techniques by which mathematical problems cannot readily or possibly be solved by analytical methods. Numerical solutions are available only at selected discrete solution points, but not at all points covered by the functions, as in the case with analytic solutions. Numeric methods are trail and error processes. We'll have to pick an initial solution and then increment over it. There are two disadvantages for major disadvantages for numerical methods in that they are noisy or we won't get the exact answer and these methods take longer to compute relative to analytic methods. What we're going to do next is we're going to solve for the integral of this function using Monte Carlo integration. Now we can get into the definition of Monte Carlo integration, and Wikipedia has a pretty good definition of it. And it states that in mathematics, Monte Carlo integration is a technique for numerical integration using random numbers. It is a particular Monte Carlo method that numerically computes a definite integral. While other algorithms usually evaluate the integrand at a regular grid, Monte Carlo randomly chooses points at which the integrand is evaluated. The method is particularly used for, for higher dimensional integrals. Here we have the Monte Carlo integration laid out here. And this f of n is a random variable, which is why it's surrounded by these brackets. Then we have the limits here, b minus a. We multiply that by 1 divided by n, where n is the number of samples in the data set. And we take that over the function. And this approximates a the analytic integration. And I think this will make more sense once we code this out. What we'll do now is we'll actually code out our 
Monte Carlo integral. What I'll do is I'll create a function. I'll call it def mc integral. And it will take in three parameters. First, it will take in a function. And this can be any function, the f of x could be x squared, x squared plus two, so on and so forth. Any function can be input here. Next, we'll also put in the limits. And what I'll do here is I'll put in a default limit. So by default, the limits will range from zero up to one. Then for our third parameter, I'll also set this as a default is the sample size. What we have to do once we take the Monte Carlo integration is we need to draw a certain number of samples, this n here. And for the default, I'll put the samples at 1000. Next, we're going to create an empty list called sample list. And what we'll do is while the length of this sample list is less than the sample size, we will continue to append numbers to our sample list. And while I'm writing the function here, I'm also going to put it right here in the code block below so we can get a better idea of what's going on. For the next portion, what we're doing in this function is we need to generate a bunch of random numbers. And the numbers that we're going to generate are going to come from a uniform distribution. What we'll do is we'll randomly generate those numbers and then we'll run it through our function. And we'll recall that our function is just simply f of x is equal to x. So the input will also be the output. Let's write that code block now. And what we'll do is for our sample list, we're going to append the number. We're going to run it through our given function. And it is going to be for a random uniform distribution. The low lim the low number will be limits and we're using indexing. This isn't a value, this is an actual number. This, this is the actual index position. And then the high number will be the upper limit. Once we have our sample list, what we do next is I'm going to create a nested list. The first thing is I'm going to return the integral estimate. And the way that we do that is if we just look at the formula here, we need to take the sum of the sample list. We need to multiply it by the limits. And this will be the upper limit subtracted by the lower limit. We divide that by the sample size. And we can see that this formula here corresponds to this formula. And we were able to write that out. What I also want to include is the sample list, which will graph out a few things to better understand what's going on here. And let's just take this. And we'll just focus on this first part. Okay, we have our Monte Carlo integration estimate here. And we can see that it's pretty close to the actual analytical solution, which is 50. And here we have 
and we can take a look at our sample list. And these are all the numbers generated. And recall that the numbers generated here are coming from a uniform random distribution. And it, the uniform random, the low number is the low limit, which is zero in our example, and 10 for the upper limit. And we have 1,000 of these samples within our list. Great. Let's actually run our function and see if we were able to code that out correctly. What I'll do is I'll recall that this is a nested list. The first index position is the integral estimate. And the second is the actual sample list that was generated. I'm going to create two variables, integral estimate and a second one. I'll call it list sample. And we're going to run our function MC integral. We're going to provide it the function from up top. We just labeled that as func. We need to set the limits like we did before. And it's going to be from zero to 10. And finally, I'll start off with a smaller sample size and we'll see why visually in a moment. And let's just double check our integral estimate. And it's roughly similar to our analytic solution. We'll get a better viewpoint of it, but recall that when, if we want a more accurate estimate of the actual integral, we'll need a larger sample size, which is why this integral estimate is a bit more off than the previous one that we just coded out manually with 1000 samples. And we can actually visualize what our integral estimate looks like. And this is what this code block does here. I'm going to run this and we can see all the estimates here. And all of these are the randomly selected numbers from a uniform distribution that we put through the function. And once we sum over that and run it through the Monte Carlo integration function, we get the estimate and we'll see, we can see that our integral estimate is a bit off and we can also visually see it. It doesn't perfectly fit into this triangle here. What we can do though, is we can increase the size of the sample size. Once we do that, we'll see that this better fits it. Let's check the integral estimate. It's not quite 50, but it's a bit closer. Let's run this as well. Might take an extra second. And we can see that it's closer to approximating the actual integral than the previous, the previous one that we ran that only had 200 samples. Let's boost this up again. It may take an extra couple seconds to run, given that we're sampling from 10,000. And we can see that it's even closer. It's not perfect still, and we can see some of the bars popping out, but it should do a better job. Let's run the integral estimate again. And we can see it's a lot closer to 50 than both of the previous sample sizes were that were smaller. And let's get, in reality, we would solve for this function analytically. The f of x is x because this is a very this is a relatively simple integral to take you just go from here to x squared divided by 2 
plug in these numbers and it's just a few lines and you can easily solve it, you know the, the integral here. When you want to use the Monte Carlo integration is when you have a more complex function that you may not know how to solve. And an example of this is if you've never worked with a normal distribution, then it can be daunting to take the, in this case, it would be Gaussian integration. And it, it can be a tough problem to solve if you're new to this. What we can do is we can estimate this with Monte Carlo integration if we're not sure how to solve this analytically, which is what we'll do. And just to explain, the probability density function is going to give us the probability of getting certain numbers between certain intervals. And we'll see that with the next example. And this example is from a book by William Mendel and Terry Sinchich, and it's called Statistics for Engineering and the Sciences. You can also check it, check it out in the references section below, but this is where I got this problem from. And I'll just read through the problem just to summarize it. Miraclin, a protein naturally produced in a rare tropical fruit can convert a sour taste into a sweet taste. Consequently, Miraclin has the potential to be an alternative low calorie sweetener. In plant science, a group of Japanese environmental engineers investigated the ability of a hybrid tomato plant to produce Miraclin. For a particular generation of the tomato plant, the amount Y of Miraclin produced, measured in micrograms per gram of fresh weight, had a mean of 105.3 and a standard deviation of 8. Assume that Y is normally distributed. Find the probability that the amount of Miraclin produced for a batch of tomatoes ranges from 100 micrograms to 110 micrograms. And we have this formula laid out here. But again, if this is the first time you've worked with a normal distribution, or maybe you've never taken a complicated integral like this, solving for it can be tough and there's an error function involved, and there's a few ways to actually approach this. But if you know how to take the Monte Carlo integration, then you can solve for it that way. And we'll go into a z-score and actually calculating this out, but let's say that you don't know how to take the z-score either. So we'll go with Monte Carlo integration to solve for this problem. What we'll do is we'll, ha we'll create another function. This time I'm going to call it norm dist for normal distribution. Like before, it's going to take a X input. I'm going to set a default mu parameter and it's going to be 105.3, which is the mean for this problem that we have here. And the standard deviation, I'll just call that sigma, is 8. What I'll do next is I am going to actually code out this problem. What we'll do is I'll just code it out and then explain it. And here I have the function written out here. What I did is I just took this and moved it here. In this case, I put the default as sigma is eight or the standard deviation is eight. 
and the mean is 105.3. And what I'll also do is I'll call, I'll create two variables called mu and sigma, and I will set both those to their respective values according to the problem. And let's work on visualizing this as well. What I'll do is I'll call a variable called x sub i. And what I'll do is I'm going to call the np arrange function. What you usually do with in statistics is for normal distributions, the majority of the distribution is covered by three standard deviations. And the way that that is summarized is you have the lower interval which is going to be the mean minus sigma multiplied by three for three standard deviations. That will be the lower end of the spectrum. On the higher end, we have the mean plus sigma for th three standard deviations. That will be our x values. Then for our y values, we'll just do a bit of list comprehension. And we're going to put it through our norm dist function here. Run that. And let's plot this out and take a look at it. Great. And we can see here that we have, and what I'll actually do is I'll actually make this a bit more granular. I'll put the step in as 0 0.01 so we have a bit of a smoother line. Great. And what we can see here is if you've ever seen a there's a bunch of different things that this is called a normal distribution, a Gaussian distribution, a bell curve, but this is what we have here. And we know that the mean is 105.3 and it's squarely in the middle. The majority of the Miracleen for tomato batches will be in this 105.3 right around this interval. And because this is a continuous distribution, we always think of this as intervals. What we want to do is we want to estimate the probability that a batch of tomatoes will be between 100 micrograms of milligram, Miracleen and 110. And that's when we're going to call on Monte Carlo integration to help us figure that out. And it's pretty simple to do this given that we have most of the tools already. And what we'll do is like before, I'll just overwrite the previous integral estimate or I'll call this integral estimate two. Then I'll call this MC sample. And I'm going to run the MC integral. And I'm going to put in for a function, the norm dist, the normal distribution function here that we wrote out. Then I'm going to put in the limits. In this case, our limits are going to be 100 to 110. Finally, I'm going to put in the sample size and I'll actually put it at 2000. Or we'll, we'll start at a lower number so we can visualize it, but let's run this. And let's take a look at the integral estimate. 0 0.466. Let's check this. And the way that we could do this is we could check it against something called the z-score. I won't go into what exactly that is since that's not the core focus of this video. But I'll just go through this and then explain it.
And what the z-score does is it gets us the analytic solution and we calculate the the area between those two and it's the same as this one so it's the analytic solution is 46.77 approximately and our integral in an estimate was 46.69 it was very close, even with a relatively small sample size. What this is saying is the probability that we get a batch of tomatoes with Miraclin and micrograms between 100 and 110 is approximately 46.7%, which makes sense given that the mean and you the me it's peaked here and we can see that a good portion of it is going to be here for the probability and we'll also visualize this as well and i'll just point out that what i just have to do some sorting so this isn't the same integral estimate and it's different technically but that's not a big deal and what I'll do is I'll run it at a relatively small size and then we'll increase it. And we'll see like before that as we increase the sample size, the estimate will get better. Let's run this, then let's plot this out. And we can see the estimate of the probability density function here. And it's between 100 and 110 for our Monte Carlo integration. We can see it's not quite smooth where it's it captures a lot of it, but it's also not perfect. If we bump this up to 500 on each side, which is 1,000 samples, and then run this, it's a lot closer to the actual answer. And what we could do also to better understand how the sample size works is we can plot out how well the Monte Carlo estimate is estimated for a given sample size. And we can subtract that by the actual analytical solution in this case. The difference between that will be the error. And we'll see that as we increase the sample size, that error should decrease. I'll create a new list called error plot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for i in range, I'm going to go up to 10 and up to 10. We'll go up to 10,000 samples, and we'll do it in a step of 10. I'm going to create a new variable, mc sample i, and I'm going to set that equal to the mc integral function, and I'll put in the dorm distribution, the limits, that's going to go from zero to 10 again, or 100 to 110. And the variable part will be the sample size, and that's going to be our i, which is this range. It'll first sample at 10, then go up to 20, and then go all the way up to 10,000 samples. And we just want to get that estimate. We don't want to remember that our function is going to return a nested list. And we just want the item at index position zero. And then we'll append our error plot. And what we'll do is we'll take the absolute value. We have our analytic solution for this saved already. We'll take that analytic solution and we'll subtract it by the MC sample I. And this may take a second to run. And let's plot this out. And we can see that initially, as we have a small sample size, 
the error, which is again, the difference between our analytic solution, which is the true solution, subtracted by the numeric solution is high. But as we increase the sample size, that error is going to continuously fall. And it won't be perfect because this is a random process where we're selecting numbers from a uniform distribution. But we can see that the error is falls within a pretty tight band over the time as we increase the number of samples. Thank you for watching. I hope that this was useful. There are a lot of references on this topic. It's very popular in STEM topics from physical sciences, physics, and it's very important in video gaming as well. And it's a really interesting topic to learn about. I listed all the references here. You can check out the textbook that I got the example for the example problem from on, on their website. And if you want to connect, you can connect with me on YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, or GitHub. Thanks again for watching. I hope that this was useful and happy coding everyone.